Hey guys, this is Dow Phoenix, and welcome to the July pickups video. It's being filmed a little later than I would have liked, but you know what? I have some excellent things that we grabbed. It's not as big of a pickup month, but I did get quite a few games, and I want to show those off to you. So first of all, there is this little sucker right here. We've got the 32X, baby. This was something I got from John from Gaming Through the Decades. I did a video, and if you want to check it out and see all about it, uh, there's a link in the description below. Uh, with that, I did get Virtua Racing, as well as Star Wars Arcade. And finally, we also snagged Virtua Fighter. So we were able to get all three of those along with the 32X, and I thought it was definitely a worthwhile purchase. Uh, well, it was more of a trade, actually. I traded him a couple games for that, and uh, so we just kind of mutually did a trade, and that's all good. Now, the next set of stuff I'm going to be covering is all $1 games. Yes, I am not kidding. All these are $1 games. I've been hooked on doing these one-stop or $1 challenge things. So if you guys are interested in the whole thing, these are a selection of games that you can get for $1. So let's go ahead and start it off here. Uh, we've got Prince of Persia on the Xbox 360. Unfortunately, not the original case, but the game is in excellent shape. And uh, that's just an awesome, awesome game to play. Um, I love the Prince of Persia series, and I really wish Ubisoft would make a new game. You know, in the vein of that game or Sands of Time or something like that. They haven't really done anything with the franchise. They just gave up on it and went to Assassin's Creed, which kind of sucks. Because at least those games were kind of unique in a way. Uh, then we have Stormrise here for the Xbox 360. This is a RTS action hybrid game that apparently is supposed to be really bad. Um, but it is made by the Creative Assembly and I think they're a great developer. So, I don't know, maybe it's not as bad as they thought. Maybe it just came out at the wrong time or something like that. I guess we'll have to give it a try one of these days and see, to see. Now we also have Infamous for the PlayStation 3. I already had a copy of Infamous uh, on my digital download from PS3, but I figured this is going to take up less hard drive space, so it's probably not a bad idea to get a disc copy. And this is just a great, great game franchise. I mean, can't really talk about about it right because I'm stumbling around but no it really is a great game definitely check it out uh, the next one we have here is Sega Superstars Tennis which for some reason on the back it says Xbox Live Arcade compilation disc but I'm guessing that they just use this as a substitute case because that's all it came with and this game was owned by Aaron and Dustin uh, so it's probably not in the best of shape because you know people that write on their games usually tend not to take care of them I've noticed but uh, you know what, I'll go ahead and buff it out or whatever. Now this next one, I was really shocked that I was able to find it for a dollar, although I technically already own it. But I was like, you know what, at that cheap a price, I might as well pick it up, pick them another copy. Maybe I could trade it later or something like that and get a little bit extra out of it. And that is Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots. Uh, yes, this is a game that gets a lot of praise um, from the Metal Gear Solid fan base and a lot of hate at the same time. I'm really not sure what camp I'm in right now. I haven't played the game yet, uh, sadly, but uh, I really need to get around to it. I'm trying to get a secondary PlayStation 3 um, so I can have one hooked up here in the game room because right now my PS3 is relegated to the living room, so I don't get to play it as much as I'd like to. Um, now, the next one I had to get, I've already owned this game, but because of the bonus that it came with, it was just, I just really wanted it again. And that is uh, Medal of Honor for the PS3. Uh, now, the Medal of Honor game itself is actually not bad. It's a pretty decent COD-like game. I mean, there's really nothing particularly wrong with it. I really enjoyed it. But this is why I decided to snag it, is because it includes a digital copy of Medal of Honor Frontline, which is just freaking fantastic, in my opinion. Um, so you get two games for the price of a dollar. That's really awesome. Now, it's only for the PS3 version, mind you. The 360 version does not come with that. It never came out on 360, to my knowledge. Um, now we've got Gran Turismo 5 Prologue, which I could have bought a regular copy of Gran Turismo 5 that had a lot more content for a couple bucks more, but like I said, dollar game, you know. 
Plus, this was like a really early look at the Gran Turismo franchise on the PS3. It was kind of interesting to take a look back at this one to see how that game has evolved. Uh, now we have Warhawk for the PS3. Uh, this is, a, from what I understand, an online-only game, and I have no idea if it's still on, to be honest. I really only bought it because of the cheap price. But you know what? I'm pretty sure that it's still online. I don't think GameStop would actually sell a game like this if it would no longer function. Because I know they pulled their copies of Mag, so I don't know. And then again, maybe they would do that. We'll see. Next one, unfortunately, I didn't get a case for it. I've heard a lot of crappiness about it, but I had to pick it up. And that game is Layer for the PS3 from Factor 5, their last game before they got shut down. They had a little bit of a flop with this one, sadly, despite being a great developer, and they just never could recover from it, and that's all she wrote. I mean, I've heard a lot of mixed things about Layer. Is it really as bad as they say once I get a new PS3? Um, they have half hooked up in here so I can play a lot more often. Maybe I'll get a chance to, to do that. Uh, the next one we have, also no case, is going to be Fracture for the PS3. This is a really interesting third-person shooter game that in a way reminds me of Red Faction with the terraforming aspects, except you can actually create terrain as well as destroy it. Um, it's actually from LucasArts, so it's the same people that did like the old school Star Wars games and stuff like that, so that's a pretty cool little uh, development team to work on a game like that. Uh, something tells me there's something wrong with the game, <laughs> but we'll see. Now, I can tell you the next game, there is definitely something wrong with. This is a terrible game, and I really didn't want to have this game, um, but it was a dollar, and I figured it might be a fun time to stream this game, and that is Turning Point, Fall of Liberty. I remember Make 21 playing this game a long time ago, like when it first came out, he live-streamed it, and wow, it was just completely awful, man. Codemasters thought that they had a good Call of Duty competitor. <laughs> oh, jeez, you guys are hilarious. <laughs> okay, and now we have Enemy Territory Quake Wars. This is another game that's supposed to be multiplayer only, although I think it does actually have a single player component, unlike, uh, you know, Warhawk. And yeah, it was just a nice snag at a buck. And speaking of that game, there's another game from the same developer that also came out. Interesting thing enough about it, uh, this game gets critically panned. I actually kind of enjoy this game a bit. And that is Brink for the Xbox 360. This game was really cool uh, for its time as far as uh, some of the different features it had. It had really excellent movement with the parkour-like movement it had. Uh, it had some cool objective gameplay and you had awesome character customization and all kinds of good stuff like that. Unfortunately, this one kind of flopped because of reasons, uh, none of which include excellent AI because this game's AI sucks ass. But if you actually found a full server of people, it wasn't too bad. It was pretty fun. Um, and also we have Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter for the 360, an excellent game to cleanse the palate of Turning Point Fall of Liberty, um, you know, totally opposite end of the spectrum. So. Those are all the $1 games. I did get one non $1 game uh, for a last gen platform, and that was Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Because why pay 40 bucks for a new digital only copy that doesn't even have the DLC when I own the DLC on my 360? So I have the gold edition now, because the gold edition is basically this with the DLC included, is all it is. Um, but. Uh, yeah, and for some reason, DLC isn't even available for sale, which is why the Gold Edition costs so much. Um, but whatever. Anyways, it was a worthwhile pickup, and I'm not going to pay those expensive Activision prices for them. Alright, so we've got nothing but PS4... Well, no, no, hold on. Hold on, we do have a Wii U game, and it's still on the shrink wrap. I'm going to need to get around to opening it once I... Um, get around to playing the Wii U again, I will do so. And that is Minecraft Wii U Edition. Um, obviously for the Wii U, because it's the Wii U Edition, what other platform would it be for, right? But obviously this one was worthwhile picking up because it's got the Super Mario content and all that, which 
It's going to be exclusive to Nintendo. And Minecraft's kind of a fun game sometimes. You know, it's not like a game that I religiously play at all. It's just like one of those games that when I get into it, I'll play it for a couple days pretty uh, thoroughly. And then I'll stop for a while. I used to play Minecraft all the way back in the alpha days, back in 2010. I was actually like the 120,000th person to buy it, and here we are like, what, 50 million copies or so later that it's been sold? Uh, it's just insane. Okay, and uh, now we have Transformers Devastation, Robots in Disguise, awesome game in person. No disguise to it at all. This is just a fantastic game. Excellent gameplay, excellent graphics. I mean, it looks just like the TV show, man. It's amazing. Um, they even got, like, the weird chromatic effects from, like, the old VHS look and things like that. You know, it was a really nice game, man. And uh, I look forward to playing it again. I rented it before, and I just felt like, well, it's an awesome game. It's just, like, 50 bucks is a lot to pay for a game of this length. I got it for about 16 bucks. I was like, you know what? Now's the time. Okay, and then we got Song of the Deep. Song of the Deep. I was streaming this game and I need to get back to it. Song of the Deep. Well, I we say about that one, right? Um, then we have uh, Nobunaga's Ambition. Sphere of Influence, right here. I'm trying to hold it all funkily there. Uh, this is a game I used to own. And I just couldn't get into it back then. I think maybe I was just not in the mood for it. I was kind of into MGS5 at the time, Phantom Pain. Because uh, they both came out at the same time and I bought both. But I just really didn't get into this one at the time. And I got a really good deal on it. I figure it's time to try it again. And we also got Dead or Alive 5 Last Round. An excellent fighting franchise. I'm a huge fan of Dead or Alive. It's one of my favorite fighting franchises. And... Uh, I think it gets a lot of unfair criticism and hate, to be honest. Uh, people talk about it being a casual series. Well, yeah, it's a nice, easy pick-up-and-play game, but it does have a lot of depth built in as well if you really want to uh, you know, get into the nitty-gritty of it. Uh, I was actually playing this game with Magus X1, and we were having some fun times. He pretty much whipped my ass, but uh, I got a few rounds on him. It's just overall, he just completely demolished me. It was fun, though. But then again, he kept playing the same character over and over, and obviously he plays nothing but that character, so uh, maybe he needs to get out of his comfort zone, and we can see who really is a better fighting game player. Just saying. <laughs> uh, and then we've got Prison Architect for the PS4. I own this game already on PC, but you know what? I figure this would be awesome to have a physical copy of, and I really enjoy the PC game. Plus, the console version supposedly has really good controls, I'm interested in checking that out. And another interesting thing, it only takes 218 megabytes to install. It's crazy. I don't know if you guys can really make that out on the camera, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah, 218 megabytes. That's insane how small that is. Um, I figure they would have put some cutscenes in or something. Maybe they did and just barely did it. Uh, last game on the list here is Dragon Quest Heroes, uh, which... I didn't have any Dynasty Warriors-esque games anymore. I know you say we play one, you played them all, but I've heard this one's actually kind of different from the other games in that type of series. And plus it's Dragon Quest, you know I mean? I do enjoy the franchise overall, you know I mean? I'm not a huge fanboy of it or anything like that, but I like some of the games a lot, and uh, I think this is a really cool idea for a game uh, in that series. So, um, yeah, that's the pickups for uh, July 2016. Um, August is probably going to be a slow month. I don't really anticipate getting much in the month of August. I might get a copy of Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Maybe I'll get a couple cheap games, but I don't really anticipate that I'll buy that much. I don't know. Then again, there is a kind of a deal I'm looking at on the original Xbox. and uh, So I don't know. If I uh, happen to get that, maybe I will do a pickups video next month. But otherwise, I'll just roll it into September if I don't get enough. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share if you enjoy these kinds of videos. And, uh, you know, it's okay if you thumbs down too. I mean, I'd rather you not, but hey, it still gives me a view. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, but till then, down Phoenix out.